Today we're going to talk about graphing functions. So we are going to sketch a function when we're given some information, and we're also going to look at a function that was already graphed and talk about what it means. Take out your lesson worksheet, looks like this, it's called graph a function. You can follow along as I go through the examples, and if you don't have a copy of this lesson worksheet, you can still follow along. Here's the problem. Describe each interval in the graph below. Carefully read the labels so your description is specific to the relationships shown in each graph. All right, the first thing we're gonna start out with is just a couple of definitions here. So our first one is a qualitative graph. All right, so what the heck is a qualitative graph? Well, a qualitative graph represents the relationship between two quantities, right, like two amounts, without numbers. Now that's weird because every graph that we've done has numbers in it. But if you look at this graph, look at this, no numbers. We've got labels, right, but we've got no numbers. Um, and so this graph is a qualitative graph, and what this one is showing the relationship between is the amount of time and the money in someone's account. And we don't know what the time is, right? Is the time weeks? Is it months? Is it years? We have no idea. Um, so it's, it's up for interpretation. Now, an interval, this is another important thing, an interval is a period of time between two events or points in time. Let's make that one green so it's a different color. So an interval is a period of time between two events or points in time. Now, this graph right here has a lot of intervals, okay? So an interval is like every little piece of the graph, okay? And I'm gonna start out by labeling these intervals so we know what we're talking about. So this first line segment here is our first interval. I'm gonna call that interval one. This line segment is our second interval, right? It's, the, it's between two points on a graph, right? So from this point to this point is interval one. From this point over to here is interval two. From here to here is number three. From here over to here is number four. Going up here is number five, down here is number six. So we have six intervals in this graph, right? There are six different things that are happening, and we are going to interpret this graph. We're gonna determine whether the function is increasing, decreasing, or constant at each interval, right? So I can look at this, and I can look at interval one and see that this line is going up, so that's increasing. Interval two isn't going up or down, staying the same, that's constant. Interval three is coming down, that's decreasing. Interval four is staying the same, so that's constant. Interval five is going up again, so that's increasing. And interval six is coming down, so that's decreasing. Okay, so that's just my basic understanding of it. It's going up, it's staying the same, it's coming down. But when I describe it, I wanna make sure I'm using labels. I wanna make sure I'm talking about time and money because that's what this is, right? This isn't time and how much somebody weighs or you know, it, it's not a different situation. It's a very specific situation about time and the amount of money that somebody has in their account. Now I got a little hint here on the bottom for us, something important to remember, and that is that you wanna look carefully at the y-intercept, right? Because you wanna include that in your description. Sometimes, these graphs are starting at zero, but sometimes they're starting somewhere else. So when we look at this graph right here, when we're talking about the money in the account, I can see that this person at the start, which is right here, had some money in their account, right? There was money to begin with. So this y-intercept is up here, and we don't, we don't know what these intervals are either. Is this $5? Is it $10? Is it $100? We have no idea. But what we can say is that there was money in the account to start out with. So I'm gonna write a little note of that. So there was money in the account at the start. Right, so we're talking about money in this person's account, um, money that's being saved or money that's being spent um, but we do know that there was something in here to begin with, right? So there was money at the start. So now we're just going to describe our intervals. So for number one, since this is going up, right, the amount of money in this person's account is increasing in this first interval here, right? So in interval number one, there was money saved. 
So I'll say money was saved, right? And we know that because it is increasing. And we can just go right through them, right? For interval two, nothing happened, right? There was no money saved. The money stayed the same, right? I'm going to abbreviate this. So money stayed the same. He didn't put money in. He didn't take money out, right? Nothing happens. And the reason that we know that is because it is a constant rate of change, right? It's a flat line. For number three, the money went down a little bit. So whatever it was, it went down a little bit. So it looks like money was spent. Whoops, I said I was going to abbreviate it, and then I didn't. So money was spent. And we know that because our line was decreasing, right? Our rate of change was decreasing. The amount of money was decreasing. Interval four, what happened in interval four, right? Looks like nothing. Money stayed the same again. Right, and that's because there was a constant rate of change. Right, there was a flat line, it had a slope of zero. So that's a constant rate of change. Interval five, increasing, right? The amount of money went from here up to here. So it looks like more money was saved. And there's something else I wanna point, point out about this interval as well. So if I compare this line to this line, right? Interval one has a positive slope, and interval five also has a positive slope, but this slope is a little steeper than this one. So that means that he saved the money at a faster rate here, right? If I were to find the slope of this one, it would be five over three. This one would be five over two. So this one has a steeper slope. So I'm gonna say he saved money faster, right? At a faster rate. And the reason I know that is because it has an increasing, right? It's an increasing, but it's steeper, right? It's a steeper slope. And then finally, in interval number six, money's coming down a little bit, right? So it looks like spent some money. So we'll say that money was spent again. And that's because it was decreasing. Okay, so if I wanted to put this into some context with time, right? Let's say these are months right here. I might say for the first three months, this person was saving money. And then for two months, they didn't save anything. And then the next month, they spent some money. And then for the next month, they didn't do anything again, right? They just kept the money the same. But then over the next two months, they really saved some money, right? They, they saved it at a faster rate than they did at the beginning. And then finally that last month, they spent some money. And again, we don't know if this is months. We don't know what the exact amount of money is here because it's a qualitative graph and they're not very specific. So we just wanna make sure that how we're describing it makes sense as far as this particular graph is concerned. All right, so now we're gonna go backwards. So let's look at the bottom here. And this time we are going to sketch a graph. So we're gonna sketch a graph to represent each situation. We're gonna go backwards. Now we wanna make sure, I have a little um, hint for you at the bottom here. I wanna make sure that you are looking carefully at the length of each interval so that it is reasonable, right? We're gonna be drawing lines here on this graph, up and down or maybe constant, but we wanna make sure that the length of these lines makes sense. And we also wanna remember that not every graph is gonna be a straight line, right? So that's another thing too. Sometimes we're gonna have graphs that are not straight lines. All right, so let me just talk about this first point that I made here. I'm gonna graph, uh, graph this situation. <clears throat> so Kelly rides her bike to basketball practice every day. She starts riding slowly and then realizes she's gonna be late, so she picks up speed. She stays at practice for an hour and then she starts riding home at a moderate rate. So I wanna show you a graph that is wrong, okay? I don't want you to copy this down yet, I just want you to look at it. So she's gonna start at home, right? This is the time, this is the distance from her house. So she starts at home. It says that she starts riding her bike slowly. So a slow ride might look something like that, we'll say, there's a slow ride. And then it says that she um, realized she was gonna be late, so she started going faster. So I want a line that's like a little bit steeper. Like that. So maybe I'm going to do that. 
And then it says she stayed at her practice for an hour. So maybe I'm going to do that. And then it says she came home at a moderate rate. Moderate rate just means like a medium kind of a rate. So maybe that. So you might look at this graph and be like, hey, you did a pretty good job there, right? I like it. But I want to show you why this doesn't make sense. The reason this doesn't make sense is because if this is her practice right here, if we're saying that this interval right here is when she was at practice, this is a constant rate right here, OK? And let's look at how long this is. It's two spaces long. So let's say that each one of these space represents an hour, OK, just for the sake of argument. Let's say this represents an hour. That means she was at practice for two hours. But let's look at how long, then, it took her to ride her bike to practice. It would be one, two, three, four, five, six hours from here to here to get to practice. So if her practice was two hours long, does it make sense that it would take her six hours to get there? So that's what I'm saying when I want your graph to be reasonable, okay? And as far as the problem is concerned, she was only at practice for an hour. So it would absolutely not make any sense that this is practice and this is how long it took her to get the practice as far as this particular situation is concerned. So let's get rid of this and let's make another graph that makes a little more sense. Now, I still like my lines, right? I still like the way that, that I have this all set up, but we just have to kind of shorten everything a little bit. So if she started riding her bike to practice, um, let's see, at a slow rate, right? Maybe it's kind of like, I don't even know. I can't really draw. You know what, I'm gonna have to, I think, just draw this one by hand a little bit. So she started out at a slow rate, so maybe she just kind of started out like that, right? Like a slow rate. But then she realized that she was going to be late, so then she had to go faster, right? So then we still want to have a steeper line. We just don't want it to be as far, right? So maybe like that, right? So she started riding her bike at a slow rate, then she got faster. Then she stays at practice. Right, so practice. Practice is going to be pretty long. It's going to be much longer than it took her to get there, we hope. And then after practice, she rode home at a moderate rate, right? She wasn't really rushing to get home, just at a moderate rate. So this graph would be much more reasonable than the first one that I drew because here's practice. And if this distance right here is, represents her one hour of practice, right, let's make a little note there. Right? If that represents her one hour of practice, then it makes much more sense that it would only take this much time to get here. Right, This is probably like 10 minutes to get there and then 60 minutes of practice and then coming back home again. So you just want to make sure that your graph is reasonable to the situation that they're giving you. And I hope that makes sense. All right, Tommy is playing fetch with his dog, Ernie. He throws a tennis ball up in the air and across the yard to Ernie, who jumps up and catches it. Now, we've got the time, we've got the height of the tennis ball. So think about it. Are we going to start down here? Let's think about that for a minute. So if you're Tommy and you're throwing a ball to your dog, does the ball start out on the ground? Right? Probably not, because we would assume that Tommy is not laying flat on the ground when he's throwing this ball. So I think our y-intercept is not going to be down at zero. It would make much more sense for our y-intercept to be up a little bit, right? Because Tommy's standing up. He's holding the ball. So the y-intercept is probably here. So it says he throws a tennis ball up in the air and across the yard to Ernie, right? So we're going to go up and across, who jumps up and catches it. Okay, and this is this point down here where we have to remember that not every graph is going to be made of a straight line. So when you throw a ball, it just goes up and kind of comes down again. So here we go. It's going up. It's coming back down. And I don't think it's going to come all the way back down. I think it's probably going to stop there because the dog is going to jump up in the air and catch it. And if it's a nice young dog, he's going to jump up pretty high, right? Probably higher than Tommy's hand when he started out throwing the ball. But again, your graph might look a little different, right? It just has to be reasonable. So your graph doesn't have to look exactly like this. For example, whoops, maybe your graph is going to look more like this, right? Maybe it's not going to get thrown as high and it's going to stop there, 
right? As long as it has some kind of curve, right? It's going up, it's coming down. And the other thing we wanna remember is that the line is not coming all the way back down to the ground again because the ball didn't bounce on the ground. Ernie, the dog, caught it while it was in the air. So I think the most reasonable graph would maybe start here, go up kind of high, and maybe come down to there and stop there. Because that would represent the ball starting, not on the ground, but a little bit up in the air because Tommy's standing up. He throws the ball up high across the yard. The ball starts coming down. Here's the dog, right? He's at the bottom. He jumps up. He catches it right here. Well, once he catches it, that's it. The ball stops moving. It's right here. So just wanted to show you a couple of real life examples of how you might graph a function. Wanted to point out um, just how it needs to be reasonable, right? That's very important that it is reasonable and that you really read the question carefully, right? Especially in this last case, you don't wanna start at the bottom here. Tommy's not laying on the ground throwing the ball. You don't want to end at the bottom because the dog caught it in the air, right? He caught the ball, it didn't bounce on the ground. So you just wanna read those things and be very careful um, to make sure that your graph matches as closely as possible the information that they're giving you. And it certainly won't be exact, and we know that because we don't have any numbers on our graph. So how could it be exact? It just has to make sense. So hopefully you understand this lesson. If you don't, please ask me in class tomorrow or ask your teacher if I am not lucky enough to have you in class. And I will see you next time.